Roberts Lake is a small impoundment or flooding area located approximately four miles southeast of Indian River, Michigan, within the Cheboygan River watershed. It is entirely surrounded by public land, which is administered by the Michigan Department of Natural Resources. The outlet of Roberts Lake is a small tributary which flows into Crumley Creek, which in turn flows into the Little Sturgeon River, a tributary to the Indian River. The lake is approximately 54 acres in size, yet the deepest location is only about five feet deep. It has also been known as South Twin Lake. Roberts Lake, along with Cochrane Lake, is named for two Indian River area veterans who died in World War II. Roberts Lake water levels are regulated by a spillway on the south end. The dam's spillway and levee were constructed in 1948 by the Michigan Department of Conservation. There are no private residences or cottages on the shores of Roberts Lake. No formal boat launches exist, although some anglers use the dam embankment to launch boats, while others use an unimproved small launch on the northeast shore of the lake. Dispersed camping is popular around Roberts Lake. The lake riparian area consists of conifer trees with a mixture of hardwood, Roberts Lake supports wildlife that includes waterfowl, loons, eagles, osprey, and so much more. Michigan Department of Natural Resources Fisheries Division and the Cheboygan County Road Commission are pursuing the removal of Roberts Lake Dam near Indian River. Randy Stewart, a local resident, is leading an effort to save Roberts Lake. According to Randy, this small dam has created a pristine wetland since 1948. Extremely small in the scale of dams, it serves two keyway holding stop logs to maintain water levels. The height is approximately six feet with a buildup of substrate in front of the dam of approximately five feet. This dam is in good shape, small in stature and relatively inexpensive to maintain. For years, it has supported nesting areas and food sources for animals, fisheries, and plant life that pass the location on to generations. Stress and fighting for territory will affect the wildlife if their homes and nesting grounds are destroyed. They will have to find another location and fight for territory. So I ask all of you, who speaks for the wildlife in need? Those wetlands that provide the needs of many types of life. Do you know their language? Do we even care? This remote wilderness area is a treasured place for many Michiganders, and they have shared memories over the years of what a special resource Roberts and Cochrane Lakes is for their families and the wildlife that depends on it. Larry Sawicki said, Roberts Lake has produced so many great memories for so many people. Violet Lapeer shared, These lakes have been our riding destination for many, many years. Kelly Key remembered, in 1976, I had my first camping adventure at Cochrane Lake, thanks to my dad, Butch. In the middle of the night, he pretended to be a bear, scratching on the door and windows. We caught a ton of panfish over the years, too. Over the years, I've enjoyed successful fishing trips on both lakes, water and ice. Numerous drive throughs every year, just to see the lakes and woods surrounding them. Days of kayaking, bonfire, get-togethers, afternoon swimming, shore fishing with my Grandpa Joe and Uncle Ron, endless stories and memories. Ryan Sawicki said, My son and I are there fishing every year. That's a well-known spot for our family since we were children. Ray Barr, a local fisherman, said, I spent quite a few years hunting and fishing around those lakes and couldn't picture them being gone. Tyler Prairie's childhood memories include I remember my dad taking me there 60 years ago and believe catching panfish with a bobber is why I enjoy fishing so much today. I still occasionally fish those lakes, and it brings back great memories. Last year I was able to take my grandson there, so four generations of our family have fished Cochrane Lake. I hope it can remain open so other kids can have that same experience. Kevin Parrott echoed so many... I had one of the coolest experiences of my life on Roberts Lake. I was probably 11, 
My uncle Artie Withy and Ron Sato took me. They both only out of Nam for a couple of years. They started talking about it. I sat so quiet I didn't move. After a while they realized what they were saying, and that a young boy was hanging on every word. They stopped, but after that I would read every book I could on Vietnam. Those lakes are Indian River. They can't take that away from us. George Jetson speaks for the wildlife. Another important aspect of keeping Roberts is the loon habitat. There is a strong contingency that looks to protect this type of habitat with the same fervor of those who want to improve the trout streams. Who gets to decide what species is more important? Tim Wells wrote, I currently live in southern Michigan, but lived in the area for several years, usually come up and camp and fish Roberts and Cochrane Lakes, great place, and so peaceful with good fishing, did very well this time. They all have one question in common. Why are we losing this beautiful lake and wilderness that we all love? Is it really necessary and can anything be done to save the lake? The rest of this video is an attempt to answer that question. The Department of Natural Resources is taking a proactive approach to dam infrastructure management. Across the state, dams are aging and their maintenance and mandatory inspection costs are rising. To address this, DNR is prioritizing responsible ownership and sustainable long-term planning. In 2021, the Fisheries Division created a dam evaluation task group with the goal of guiding investment decisions. This group looks at which fisheries division dams should be maintained, which should be removed, and where stream restoration is the better option. The Roberts Lake Dam case represents a part of this broader statewide strategy among all DNR divisions. It provides a clear example of how financial, environmental, and community considerations are all being weighed in infrastructure decisions. The Roberts Lake Dam was flagged during evaluations as being in poor condition by Eagle. It presented not only a significant maintenance burden, but also posed risks of failure due to debris jams and flood potential. From the DNR's perspective, it was clear this structure did not justify continued investment. It was not recognized as a high-priority unit for retention, especially when compared with other dams across the state that provide higher ecological or recreational benefits. As a result, the Roberts Lake Dam was formally recommended for priority removal. This decision aligns with the larger strategy of phasing out aging infrastructure while focusing resources on higher value sites. Dams are no longer built on North American landscapes today with the knowledge governments have on their long-term value and costly maintenance and inspections. The decision to remove Roberts Lake Dam was supported financially and organizationally. The DNR secured grant funding to remove over a dozen dams across the state, including Roberts Lake since it was rated as a lower priority compared to other nearby DNR dams. Locally, the project brings together partners, Huron Pines, which specializes in conservation, and the Cheboygan County Road Commission, which will manage the roadway and new culvert. The National Fish and Wildlife Foundation is providing the funding, but importantly, their grants apply only to removals and replacements, not to repairing aging dams. Several alternatives were examined for Roberts Lake Dam. Simply doing nothing was not viable. Engineering inspections, mandated action, and ongoing maintenance costs were unsustainable currently and for future generations. Repairing the dam was not considered an option as DNR decided against future ownership responsibilities for this structure. Likewise, closing Roberts Lake Road was dismissed as the county wanted to preserve road connectivity. The best path forward was identified as removing the dam and replacing it with a bottomless culvert overseen by the Road Commission, similar to the Onaway Road Bridge, maintaining both road and stream connectivity while eliminating long-term risks and financial burdens. The plan calls for construction during a two-month window in late summer 2026.
This timing was carefully chosen to avoid conflicts with loon-nesting fall trout spawning downstream in the Little Sturgeon River and the hibernation cycles of reptiles and amphibians. These are mandatory under EGLE dam removal permits. The impoundment will be lowered gradually, with best practices applied to control sediment release and protect downstream habitats. Huron Pines and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service also conducted surveys for freshwater mussels to prepare for any necessary interventions. Mussels are mostly threatened or endangered statewide. The relatively limited and common fish communities, bass, bluegill, pike, pumpkin seed of Roberts Lake, will be reduced over time to the reduced lake marsh complex. Overall, this stage process reflects a strong commitment to ecological stewardship. Cochrane Lake should not be impacted since it is a glacially created lake upstream. Documents exist showing Cochrane Lake and its current depths in place prior to Roberts Lake Dam construction in 1948. Aerial imagery prior to 1948 show Roberts Lake as a wetland lake complex, two to three feet shallower than it is today. Environmental considerations have been central to this project. By aligning construction with sensitive species life cycles, the project minimizes ecological disruption. The removal also benefits the broader watershed, restoring stream connectivity and reducing the risks of catastrophic flooding. For the community, the solution ensures continued access across Roberts Lake Road. The Cheboygan County Road Commission will assume responsibility for the road and culvert moving forward, ensuring sustainable management of this vital infrastructure. Stakeholders had several key questions. The most common, why remove the dam at all? The answer lies in costs and priorities. With more than 60 dams under fisheries division ownership, not all can be maintained. As for the removal, the plan is structured, permitted, and environmentally mindful, involving staged drawdowns and a bottomless culvert replacement. This is part of a much larger statewide challenge of dealing with aging dam infrastructure across multiple DNR divisions, including wildlife, parks and recreation, and forestry. In conclusion, the Roberts Lake Dam removal represents a balanced solution to a complex challenge. It addresses immediate concerns of safety, maintenance, and cost, while also ensuring long-term ecological benefits. Through partnerships and careful planning, the project preserves community connectivity while restoring natural stream processes. This case is a strong example of how infrastructure, ecology, and community values can be reconciled through careful decision-making.